great. We had this giant influx of money. Lots of, lots of that spending was given for nurses, but now what? Now that money is, uh, is drying up, right? We don't have that money to work with anymore. So remember hospitals are also business. They have their profit margins. They're ha they have their quarterly goals to meet. So if you want a properly functioning hospital, you have to be able to generate some kind of profit, not just revenue, but some kind of profit because lots of times people don't want to invest in something that isn't going to generate them some kind of revenue. So with less government funding means they have to cut costs somewhere. And the first place you're going to cut costs is most likely the nurses, the actual staffing, because nurses don't really bring in any kind of hospital revenue. Physicians, surgeons, those kind of people have their patients. They're the ones that bring in the revenue. So nurses are kind of always getting getting cut off. Same with CNAs, respiratory therapists. They're the one of the highest costs that the that the hospital has to has to be burdened by. You could say I want to say nurses are a burden, but if you're looking from a financial business standpoint, nurses and other healthcare professionals in that realm are a financial you could say burden to these places. Unfortunately, so hospitals are now having less money to work with. I also got some of the numbers and according to a uh, macro trends, hospitals profit margins are the lowest they have been seen since 2016. So the 2023, roughly the profit so far that the hospitals are generating on average is about 2.3, 2.4%, which like I said, it's, it's as low as they've been since 2016, but they are definitely in an uptrend compared to the last couple quarters of 2022. It's definitely trending back up. So you might slowly see a surge in in prices for for travel contracts, probably in the upcoming winter. Lower profit margins, less money to go around. They don't want to spend it if they don't have to. Like I said, they have to satisfy their initial investors. Like I said in the beginning, are there really fewer jobs? There definitely is no fewer jobs for nurses. There is definitely less money in the system for nurses, but the amount of jobs out there is still really, really high. I looked at some of the numbers and according to the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics, there is about an average around 200,000 more nursing jobs in the US every year. So there is 200,000 nursing jobs available for nurses every year. So there hasn't been any kind of drastic decrease in that. It just increases as time goes on. Population is going up. People with comorbidities are going up. There always, is always going to be a need for nurses. And right now, if you look at year over year, there's an increase in nurses that need to go to bedside every year. So there is no shortage of jobs whatsoever. If someone is telling me that there's a there's a less job for nurses, that that is pretty false information. Just look at your local hospital job board, see how much openings they have. They'll take you in a heartbeat. You're not going to have any kind of issue finding a job as, as, as a nurse. I did also take a look at Indeed. And currently in the month of June, there is 290,000 jobs available for nurses nationwide. So that that's saying that, hey, there's less contracts, less jobs out there for you. That's definitely false. There's 290,000 jobs available throughout the US according to um, indeed.com for for nurses. And of course, some of those might be old, might not be the RN bedside position, but just there's still a giant abundance for nurses out there. I also got some of the the stats for some of the highest travelers and destinations such as California, Texas, New York, Florida, and Pennsylvania. And on the lower spectrum, there is about 120,000 jobs a year in those states that need to be filled and all the way to the peak of California, which is in the 300,000s. So just that perspective is just in those states, there's hundreds of thousands of nursing jobs available for nurses. Also, one major thing for this decrease in pay is the season. We are in the summer months. And what's interesting about nursing is there's always a demand for nurses, right? But depending on the season and the circumstance, the 
pay for certain specialties fluctuates throughout the year. During the changing months, like going from winter to spring or spring to summer, you see a lot of respiratory stuff. And who gets affected most by respiratory issues is your PEDS patients. So lots of times during the, the months where the seasons change, children seem to be going to the hospital more because of that increase in pollen or just the atmosphere pressure, humidity, all that kind of stuff exacerbates these respiratory issues. So you see more children going to hospital. So PEDS positions as nurses definitely go up in, in these months and also OR positions. Lots of times people prefer to take time off in the summer versus the, the winter. So they're more likely to get surgery during, during those months. And sometimes with our older population, it's a little bit harder for them to harder for them to get mobile during the colder months. So they usually delay these hospital, these uh, operations for the, the uh, summer months versus the winter months. You might see a higher surge in ER positions and ICU positions, med surgery positions, just because now you had winter time and who suffers most in winter use your elderly population. But everybody seems to get sick during the winter months. So obviously there's a higher demand for nurses in most in most specialties, but the ones that kind of increase the most are your ER, your ICU, your med surgery, med surgery position. There is still a need for those P positions, but remember you kind of got to look at the fluctuating census there. The one thing that I have seen going on these last couple of months is higher staff incentives. So this might, you could say, hinder the staff nurses from going into travel nursing. I know a lot of units out there are offering shift bonuses, which basically is if you could pick up an extra shift, they give you like $300 on top of that, $400 on top of that. So they're incentivizing you to kind of uh, stay. If you have more nurses staying, you're, you could say your your need for nurses is a little bit less, but there's no really a hospital out there that's fully staffed, to be honest. But that that incentive pay is probably holding nurses uh, to staff a little bit more, just because they they have that backing of maybe extra three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars as a bonus for uh, for an extra shift. I've also seen some serious hiring bonuses. I know when I was in California, there were some rumors about hospitals offering seven thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars for new staff, um, like a new new hire bonus, basically. And then on top of that, they also offer a referral bonus. So that's handy. I mean, if you get paid seven thousand dollars just for a sign on bonus, but remember that does come with a cost. You usually have to sign up for a couple of years. And if you sign up for a couple of years, you're kind of limited to maybe having a resurgence of travel nursing contracts. If you're kind of a traveler, maybe looking to settle down, maybe you might want to hold off a little bit. If you can, maybe like a year, maybe do it after the winter months, because this incentive does sound nice of a 10K sign on bonus, but lots of times travel nurses are making more than, than 10K a year. So long story short, guys, travel nursing is not going anywhere. This is just coming down from the highs we've seen in the last couple of years. Like I said, I was travel nursing before this whole widespread infection happened, and I was still making more as a travel nurse than a staff nurse. I was able to get the vacations I want. I was able to take a couple of weeks off, even a month after each contract, just because I was able to make more money. And you have a little bit more more leeway. You have a little bit of more room to work with because you're only committing to three months in a contract and you always have the opportunity to to extend that contract and with that extension always comes an increase in pay. But just like a staff nurse, a travel nurse could also get screwed if you don't properly look at your finances, you don't really know what you're what you're preparing for, if you're not really sure if it's affordable for you, if you're not sure what you what you're doing, it's best to maybe wait a couple months before travel nursing so you don't get screwed because Sometimes people live in certain places that don't have a high cost of living and they might see like this, hey, this contract is paying X amount of dollars and it seems like so much, but when they actually move, rent costs a lot more, food costs a lot more, gas costs a lot more. So same way you get screwed as a, as a staff nurse, you could also get screwed as a travel nurse. So just be careful, but I've been travel nursing for the last four years and this always happens in the summer months. It just feels like a little bit it's hitting you a little bit harder because we're coming down from these such P 
peak contract that we've seen in the last couple of years. But travel nursing is not going anywhere, guys. Thank you so much. See you guys next week.